something about UT Bank and how the license was revoked. And, you know, there was a time when you said you don't necessarily blame the finance minister. You blame Ghanaians for voting these people into power. Yeah. How, I don't know how Ghanaians will take that or how they took it at the time. But yes, they voted them into power, but they are not the ones that shut it down. Is it yeah, that but, you're, but you're when you vote people into power, the you, they them. are to represent you. That's a wider context. Democracy is about representation. So these are people we've represented or people who are going to present us and to act in our name. That's what I meant. So that means we voted wrongly. Yeah, as, as it turned out, if you ask me, Yes, we voted wrongly. For and, President Kufuado. And for what has happened around, I think uh, you can look at me in the eye and tell me that, yes, I'm telling you the truth. Times are hard. Times are really hard. What the government has done this time, it's unbelievable. Um, see, we consume the past because people save as everything went. We're consuming the present. High taxes, inflation, mm. utilities are going up by the day. And we've consumed the, 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 the future yeah. because there's, there are deaths that have been scheduled ahead of us. Mm -hmm. It is a desperate situation. And I don't think we've been in this situation before. We haven't. No. So if you had a way, would you say that, again, you said that it was wrong, or we, we made the wrong choice in terms of presidency, but these are people who are your friends or were your friends. Yeah. But it's about... Thinking they will do the right thing, but not doing the would right thing. Would you say this if your bank was still active? Absolutely, yes. I'm not talking about Kufia Mwabi and his, his bank, no. Um, if you want to talk about the bank, there are a whole lot of issues. That, the reason why I don't discuss it very often is that people will say that, yeah, he's being personal and he's peeved and all those things, but that's not the, the true story. The thing, it doesn't make sense to me. If you take me out, one, I struggled with my team to build a bank. And I told you about the story, how yes. we built it. It's a great Ghanaian story. Yes. I don't care who's judging it. And we need to create such stories and mm -hmm. have a lot of it. That is what amounts to a country being developed or not. Every company will go into some kind of difficulty at some point in time. Mm -hmm. So the government comes in and realizes that, ah, UT is uh, having liquid support and the Bank of Ghana is supporting it. UT, UT was about 800 million, right? Mm -hmm. Which it cannot pay because of the problem, the structure, and things like that. The government spent about 2.2 billion to close to UT close Bank. Down, now, yeah. if somebody owes you 800 million and you have 2.2 billion to throw away, at least give it to the bank as, as, uh, as a loan mm. instead of just throwing the money away. Yeah. And UT didn't need 2.2 million cities to even turn around. But that decision decided to take. Mm -hmm. I don't know the facts that they had. They probably had something which they believed in and so on and so forth. But everywhere in this world, U.S., wherever, some stories are too big to just throw away. Yeah. And even banks that have been around for over 100 years go into these difficulties, and mm -hmm. the government bails them out, and they pay and continue business. Mm -hmm. So how do we grow businesses in Ghana where they survive their owners and chalk 100 years and so on and so forth. If a party comes and decides, I don't like this person, therefore I'll close the person's business. Is that, be, is that what it was? But it's because been, you've said it yourself that you had a conversation with the finance minister the night before and nothing of this sort came up. No. And the next morning before you realized you had missed calls from your daughter yeah. and they had just yeah. shut down your bank. Yeah. And not only that, I left the bank about 18 months mm -hmm. before the bank before, was closed down. Yeah. I am in court as we speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, 18 months, if there had been anything, it would have come out because there was a new MD and the board was functioning and things. Yeah. But then forget about that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go for medical checkup, right? Mm -hmm. And we go to court for them to release my passport to me. After up and down, up and down, the judge says, I don't see how he keep his passport. Let him go and check yeah. and come back. Because after all, if he dies, the case will die. Mm. So he gave me my passport. When I went to American Embassy, and I've been going to America since the 80s, American Embassy refused me entry. entry visa. When I checked through the back door, there's a letter from some government department saying that I was a security risk or I shouldn't be made to fly. Even after the court had ordered yeah, for your Yeah, even after the court released. had given me my, my passport. So you know what I did? And I'm very, very tough to break. I said, Kukran me, I don't need a visa. So I went to my village, Kukran me. 
Now, why would... And you see, you see you're dazed a bit. I am. Not yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah. Completely. You know, so so um, I think uh, what happens is that you have people who are envious, who are jealous, who are vindictive, and they hide behind the institutions. Mm -hmm. They are like cockroaches, actually. Mm. You see, cockroaches making noise in there. Now, you can, as long as you put on the light, they all hide. Yeah, yeah. So you will not see them, but you know that they are causing havoc. And, and, it's, and it's also sad because the government, when they come into power, they compromise mm, all the state not. institutions. Yeah. All. Not even one is no, left. No. They change all the heads and they put their puppets or their cronies or their cohorts and whatever. And they can really uh, make you uncomfortable mm -hmm. if you want to. It's a matter of telling whoever you put there that make the guy uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's what happens. You, you, did you see this coming? No, I, I don't see it coming. I don't hate people. I don't, yeah. hate, as I sit here, I still don't hate anybody. Even after everything that has happened no, no, to you? No, no, no. No malice at all? At all. I don't have time because I'll be eating my own uh, mind yeah. and heart. I don't have it. So I only pray to God that whoever hates me, God should tone down the punishment for the person. Because God loves me. If, if you hate me, you punish me. No, but we, sometimes we pray and we're like, fire, die, <laughs> nah, do nah, this, nah, do that. Nah, 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 you nah. don't believe in that. No, no, no. You should pray for your enemies. It's tough. Yeah, yeah, I pray for them. After all, how much do you need? I think we tend to rate ourselves too highly. Mm. But I always tell people, remember that you are only one out of eight billion people. Mm -hmm. So really, you are unique, you are special, hmm. but you're not worth anything. One out of eight billion, any day, the maths, you can't even put the zeros there. But you are supposed to do your bit. So do your bit and leave the rest to, and the Bible says you should not judge. And leave the rest so you to cannot God. judge. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know how I would handle this.